Okay, I don't know why this is coming out black and white, but I kind of like it. All right, I want to show you uh, my version of Indian fried bread, which to Puerto Ricans is called arepa, if you ask me. It's very similar. Okay, so this is a finale. I put this in a deep fryer. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what I did before I did that. Okay. All I did is I shaped it into a patty. Um, I actually needed it. I, I blend, I put in, um, peppers and onions and I needed it as though I was making bread. And then I stored flat pieces like this uncooked in the fridge, right? Okay. I don't know why this is not coming out color. Ah, quite interesting. Anyway, I I use this this uh kneading bowl, right? That's used uh I mean, I use this little bowl for kneading, but I actually use my print machine as well. So, I poured oil in here. As you can see, there's oil in the bottom. You see that? And, and when this was raw, uncooked, I placed it here and I poured more oil and I turned it around. So when I put it in here in the deep fryer, it was soaked on both sides with oil. And then I set it and forget it. Now, you're probably thinking, why didn't you deep fry it if you're so afraid of oil? I mean, why did you bake it if you're so afraid of oil when you, you, you soaked it in oil? Well, because Dr. Gundry says that olive oil, whether it's fried or not fried, it's not true. Don't listen to what they say that once it, it, it turns into, you know, after a certain temperature, um, I, I, I forget what the terms are, that, but that the oil loses its properties, okay? Well, that's not correct, he says. He says olive oil is good whether it's deep fried, however it is, just take it. It never goes bad. And so I'm a little lazy about frying because then you get, you get, you get, um, <clears throat> oil all over, right? And, uh, you got to watch it. It could burn, etc. Well, I, I put this here in the deep fryer overnight. Uh, last time I had some before I went to bed and just now I got up like at two or three in the morning. I said, oh, let me throw in, um, an arepa, right? Or Indian fried bread, right? And, um, this is still nice and hot. It was just made just now. I don't know why this is not coming in color. Okay. So this is my deep Indian fried bread. Let me take a piece. Mm. Now, I'm going to share with you on another video how I made this. I actually used milk instead of water. I used one cup of milk and I, and I actually um, sift it. The flour, usually you don't do that for for Indian fried bread, whatever, but I like doing it. So because I used water, milk instead of water, and I used whole milk, right? It came out a little bit like a biscuit. Mmm, you just took a bite. It tastes a little bit like a biscuit. And it's because the difference between biscuit and bread is that with bread, you use water. Mmm. I'm sorry, I'm showing this. And this is a really, really good comfort food. Mm. Now, I have put a lot of uh, onions and also some sweet peppers, but more onions. I don't taste the onion much. It's sort of like the onion became part of the flour or something. But it has a unique taste and flavor because it has onions, peppers, olive oil. I put a little butter instead of oil. Now, when you make bread, you could put a little oil so it could become moist and tender. Instead, I put butter. Okay. There are recipes where people put lard. Now I'm not into lard, you know, it's not healthy, but this is really good. It's almost like a biscuit It's between a biscuit and an arepa. So I wish you had a color because this right over here sticking out, that's a piece of pepper right there. Anyway, I really just wanted to share this with you. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm excited about this. I'm going to do this regularly instead of buying store-bought bread. Although when I do, it's, it's, it's multi-grain bread. 
multi-grain sprouted bread, which I'm going to make some sprouted bread and share that with you as well. Thank you for watching. Manja, manja.